Okay, let me check what has been. Listen. Sir, the problem is that like you know, only the tiles are visible, not the screen you presented. The code, piece of code you presented was is not being visible in the recording. Sir, it's there. It's there. Now it's there. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, so just let me yes, check. Yes, yes, yeah, just let me yes, check sir, the yes, previous sir. Uh, yeah, in the previous uh, week also it is there. So yeah, so may, maybe maybe the odd times where I might have presented only one window it was. Uh -huh. Might be sir. So, let's, uh, let's start. Sir. Yes. Sir, uh, last week lab I I didn't uh, I forgot to CC the TA, but I sent the mail to you on time only, sir. But okay. uh, and and uh, the last Sunday. The late, the late, the second submission, sir. Then I uh, CC the TA, so that'll be considered, no, sir. Oh, just, just send a note to. Both yes, sir. I send, I send the yeah. note with the second submission that I forgot to CC the TA, but I sent it to you. Okay, uh, forward it to the TA also. The note. Okay, sir. All right. So finally, we can start recording. Right. And so I hope we are back to my screen. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, so we'll start exploring one uh, aspect of polymorphism, which is uh, overloading. And before that, I would like to share some things uh, with you. So, um, so normally, if we have int i five, and then uh, say. So uh, sometimes you would like to have uh, variables that you don't want to change. So you can write constant for this. Okay. And um, yeah. so you're getting an error because uh, once you declare something a constant, you may not change it. Okay. Yeah. And so Right. 
anyway so um, this thing is uh, required i mean it, it's useful so actually the uh, everything in uh, like most of the things that you have in object oriented programming those are aimed at better organization and uh, prevention of errors not always security but organization and prevention of errors and so if you want to say um, you know if if you write a function that uh, say uh, this kind of uh, void function that is in uh, so we uh, call by reference maybe because if, otherwise it will not modify anyway the cop uh, copy of the uh, function so the copy of the variable uh, yeah so I'm, so what what i'm saying is that if if i called by value then uh, anyway it would the function as we have seen function would be passed actually a copy of the original variables so there's i mean uh, no point using a constant there because uh, it won't change the original variables okay and uh, suppose now we uh, call by reference okay but still then i would like to protect uh, that variable over there in the given address okay then i have written constant for the same reason and um, let's write something this is fine because it modifies only this uh, it will output nothing it will it modifies only this value here and we can say that uh, see out that is fine but as soon as we say is equal to 113 112 uh, error right because we are not allowed to modify a constant okay. so this is how you can uh, you can protect certain certain uh, Uh, variables even though you are operate uh, the function requires to operate you to call by reference okay so once you write something is constant you are not allowed to change it so okay this is one This was about keeping something constant and 
our next thing that we learn is so um, when we declare a class when, when we declare a class usually uh, what we do is uh, yeah after after declaration of the class after defining the class we uh, declare several objects of it and each has its own copy of the variables and functions yeah. but suppose now we want to uh, you know uh, we, we we want to uh, we want the classes to share some variable okay. why why would we want such a thing for record keeping is uh, say suppose uh, some race is happening yeah this olympic was over a few weeks back some race is happening and uh, you're somehow keeping a record of that so no matter how i mean how you maintain the uh, records of the various competing athletes so the prelims uh, etc you would like to know how many you would like to keep an account of how many athletes are still competing right throughout all the rounds and all so for these things uh, it can, i mean you might need a variable that is shared among more than like one object so um okay see how this is done class shared so first without sharing I'll show you so non sharing integer count and then we go public shared this is the constructor Construct initialize them and then uh, out is get count and then and uh, we can do this here. So let's see the output. Yes, someone is pointing out the error. Uh, yeah. So you haven't initialized count anywhere. Like you have directly incremented it without initializing it to zero first. Hello. Yeah. 
Yes, right. So uh, yeah, it's 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 not. Uh, thank you. It's not initialized. Uh, we should say count is equal to zero, something like this, right? And that's okay. Fine. Okay. So each object is being uh, initialized separately. Now, I would like these objects to share the uh, share this count variable. Okay. So uh, let me remove this initialization. Okay. And say so. I need to make this static. And uh, so something is static means it's being shared by it will be shared by the objects of the class. So there needs to be a common definition of this variable outside of the class. And uh, let's do that. I can say in shared. This means it's part of the class equals to zero. Common initialization. Okay. Uh, just one second. So, um, if I didn't make the static, this would uh, would this work? If I didn't make the static, just let me check once. No, uh, uh, this uh, external thing will not work for a private uh, member if it is not static. Let's see now. Uh, so I will. Let's see whether if there's any error or not. That's fine. And right, so yeah, count is three because uh, the object uh, each time uh, uh, you know each time. Uh, you declare an object, the constructor, uh, the constructor is executed, and it basically increases the value of count by one each time. So it becomes three for all the objects. So we are we are kind of keeping a coherent record through this kind of static variables. Um, okay. Uh, what else? Uh, Maybe uh, yeah. So a few more things about using constants. Uh, so we can see that uh, like uh, uh, in a function, a variable we have passed as a constant and uh, it conserves the actual value of the. And uh, it will like what does it mean for a member function of class to be a constant? Is is that it will never change uh, any of the uh, member data of that class? Okay. So class. Sorry, we need to. Um, plus, and this we have entity count and the public. Um, 
constructor is not needed here. non-constant we can yeah one function we can say um, count is equal to 99 this is fine right this is quite fine This does not create any problem. This should not be here anymore. Yes. Okay. Uh, but if I declare something like Because I'm not declared this to be a constant. That's why, because it like is it's a non-constant function unless I declare this as a constant function. Just one second. Okay, this uh, right. This has not. Uh, I will just. Uh, I am not initialized. I guess. Oh, this is still static. So static plus initialization and count is equal to zero. Then can I write here? Okay, read only object. So this. Okay, yes, now it's okay, but. Um, Okay, it, it cannot, it cannot, it cannot uh, change the value of a function, a uh, value of a private member, data member, a constant function. But uh, you see something interesting was happening here. Uh, static, if we declare, then we would have no problem. Um, yeah, so let's do it this way and priv count. Yep. Yep. This should be okay. And this should not be okay. Yeah. So non-static, uh, like non-static members of the class, cannot have their value changed by a constant function, constant member function. Okay. All right. So. That is all we had for our tidbits. Okay, now let's uh, proceed to uh, F.
All right, so can yeah. actually we have uh, so in case of constructors at least we have seen this overloading already. Was uh, twice I wrote a constructor and one of them was accepting an argument. But uh, anyway, let's let's do this again. So uh, just two words before we see this. Uh, overloading, uh, so polymorphism, can anyone define this? What is polymorphism? Sir, uh, with same function name, uh, uh, many function bodies can be defined, yeah, so in, but in, with different in arguments. General, in general, phenomenon of polymorphism. So uh, the meaning is in the name itself. Poly means many, and morphism means many forms. So something it can be function, can be operator or anything. So uh, that assumes uh, different uh, meanings under different surroundings. It is called. I mean, this phenomenon is called uh, polymorphism. Uh, for example, something you will probably be required to do in your lab later on, that uh, these mathematical functions that you are defining on your own, they are actually, I mean, in terms of precision, they are much more powerful than what by default you are provided. And suppose in some, some program, parts of it, you can, uh, I mean, you can suffice with uh, normal addition, multiplication, anything. But uh, sometimes you need your own precise mathematical operations also. Then the very uh, notions of the like operations involved, plus, minus, multiplication, etc. You can uh, somehow define them in such a way that under certain certain circumstances, these operations that are already defined in the language, they will become uh, the precise operations that you have designed yourself. Okay. So that is called polymorphism. And so yeah, like something assuming many forms is polymorphic. And uh, of course, as you said, an example of that would be a function that assumes different forms. So uh, yeah, so actually the compiler recognizes these different forms through whatever the whatever arguments the compile I mean the function receives. So uh, repeating a character, it character rip cat. So this one. So this, this function, it types asterisk 45 times in a row. That's it. Then we have, so we would like to now choose what character will be
and finally now we'll decide what all we can do i mean how many times we can just let me copy paste from here how many times we'll repeat even that we will set n times and i'll say this is n all right so Series of equal to's. That's good. And then say six to two. So this is an example of function overloading, which is in turn, uh, in turn, kind of polynomial. So function overloading. So for example, um, yeah, this is something that I used to give earlier. So you know, suppose you are uh, defining classes which. Uh, correspond to geometric shapes and you keep on uh, inheriting from the mother classes and accordingly so if your uh, class is uh, you know general quadrilateral you would need to provide all uh, so uh, it's a general quadrilateral and you need to find the area so you would need to provide all four sides and all four angles as soon as it becomes a rectangle, you just need two sides. When it becomes a square, uh, you need one side only. So these things, I mean, for such cases, you can have a polymorphic, I mean, uh, an overloaded function. It's a polymorphism. Okay. Um, so let's move on. All right, so uh, we know this. Uh, we know what uh, plus plus. So so let, let's we are starting with uh, uh, unary operators. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so uh, plus plus the unary, unary operator plus plus it means uh, increase by one. 
you know, it can be a postfix or a prefix. Uh, a slight difference is there because uh, if you say couple it with a print command or something, as a cout command, like, then uh, after, I mean, the postfix uh, increment comes after the printing. All right. So this counter uh, counter uh, function we will write again. So plus Return. Now, uh, counter is basically the name of the class, and uh, we would like to have an uh, like I want the plus plus operator to generalize to this class object. So what I'll do is, boy, this is a new keyword, operator. It is specifically meant for overloading operators. Plus plus, and I will say this is plus plus count. Or I can I can actually write anything here. This 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 plus plus does not correspond to this plus plus actually. used uh, the overloaded operator yet. Fine. Just let me see the output, which is zero. Now, I will use the operator, which is, uh, so the operator plus plus, it works on uh, numerical data types, right? Not, not objects, but we have overloaded it now. And we can write This plus plus now works on the objects. Um, let's let's see. Um, so this plus plus operator. Uh, okay. So just just to demonstrate that uh, we can 
just simply write count is equal to count plus one. Okay. When this writing plus plus here does not have anything to do with plus plus there. Uh, we could have also changed the meaning, but please do not do this. Okay. Yeah. We could change the meaning also, but uh, it's not done. So the whole purpose to overload an operator is to do a similar thing to a wide range of uh, uh, what do you call it? wide range of thing. I should not say object. Right. So, uh, just to distinguish between postfix and prefix, let's say. Yeah, this gives an error. So we can, uh, yeah, we we need to fix this. And uh, how do we how do we fix this actually? So let's so uh, just let's uh, play around. Obviously, uh, what I'm doing will not work. So just let's check whether this works or not. Post fix, right? And you can see that the compiler differentiates already. The colors are different, so yeah, unlikely to work. Yeah, doesn't work. So, what to do? Uh, well, I think uh, this acts as a signal probably. So let's check. Yeah. So, when overloading an operator, if I write this int here, right? So it, it basically this it, this doesn't mean it is taking and uh, it should take something. I have not even named the variable which it should accept as an argument. Writing int here, it goes to this goes to a signal to the compiler that uh, overload the same the oper operator mentioned before uh, like these uh, brackets as postfix. And we can see that it updates, of course. Uh, just let's check something. Could I write care here? No. Or could I write floor? Well, sorry, float. Not floor. No. So int is just a kind of signal to the compiler that uh, to uh, I mean uh, overload this operator as a postfix. Okay, so uh, now is a logical point to stop. We will continue tomorrow with polymorphism and we'll meet at the lab today and for the next few labs you will be doing uh, extensions of what you have done last time. We will keep on defining the mathematical operations of things. Okay, so let's go here, stop sharing. I'll just take your attendance meanwhile. Okay, so let the recording save. Fine, so we'll meet at 2 o'clock today. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, what will be the topics for today's lab? Then? So I, I said just now, we'll be, uh, we'll be like defining, not you, you will be defining more mathematical operations, right? Last time you did the addition. Okay. Sir.